Welcome everyone to another CTC software webinar. My name is Sean Zerbis, Technical Evangelist at CTC, and in this session, I want to take you through a comprehensive introduction to the tool Fire Rating on the BIM Project Suite. Before I dig in too far, let's just make sure we're all talking about the same thing here. The process of creation of Fire Ratings in Revit models, there's a lot of different ways of doing it, and some of them can be really frustrating. You, you do have a lot of options for graphics. Unfortunately, though, a lot of those options really have a lot of trade-offs and the process is usually super manual. There's one really automatic one, but again, trade-offs. In this case, we're gonna talk about a strategy that you can use to help automate the creation and maintenance of your fire rating or life safety plans. Uh, so we're gonna kind of cover that right now. We're gonna talk about four major things where you can get access to the tool fire rating. We're gonna go through a quick introduction to the interface. I'm gonna generate some fire rating graphics, and then I'm also gonna show you, if you don't have the tools already, how you can get your hands on the suite itself. Since I'm not really big on like death by PowerPoint, we're gonna jump directly into Revit and do a live demonstration here first. So within Revit, you can see I'm in my typical office building uh, demo model here. I'm gonna go over to my code plan or life safety plan. And uh, we're gonna take a look at some of the properties that we can play with here. I'm gonna focus on this sort of central core area of the building for a little while here. If I click on a wall in Revit, I'm sure many of you have seen this property in the type definition of the wall. I'm in the type properties for this B5 inch wall. It's got a property called fire rating, it's built into Revit. Right now, this particular wall has a fire rating of one space, capital H, capital R, one hour. And there's another wall I have up here, this wall, and this isn't the super clean fire rated floor plan, guys. Don't judge my design. But if I edit this particular wall and take a look at its type data, it's a two hour rated wall. It's actually the only two hour rated wall in the entire model that I'm aware of. But those two walls right now, I can't distinguish those fire rated walls from any other walls that are not fire rated. So the most popular option that I've seen companies do and you're more than welcome to do this. You don't need the fire rating tool for this particular workflow to work. You can go to visibility graphics, you can go into filters, you can create and then add to your model filters for the different types of ratings you have. This one is filtering for that fire rating property at, two, at one hour, this one's filtering for that property at two hour, and I can set up the graphics for how I want this to appear. Like maybe my one hour wall, I want to be a blue color, and I want it to be solid infill, or maybe you want to have some other pattern that you use, you can leverage that. And you can do the same thing for your two hour rated wall. Maybe I want that to be red and I want that infill pattern again to be a solid infill. You can set those types of properties up. You can even view template this. And then in your project, it'll start to color fill your walls based on their properties, which in my opinion is one of the better ways of doing fire ratings. But here's the problem with it. Right? If I zoom in here to this upper right office area where I've got a door and a window, you kind of see some of the issues that we run into and why we have made the fire rating tool in the first place. Most of the tools in Revit that automatically read the properties of walls and then create some kind of graphic based on that, don't allow it to go through the openings. And so code officials and a lot of us in the architecture realm, we don't like this. It stops the graphic across that door. And in a life safety plan, I actually want the graphics to go through that door opening. The, the wall above it is still rated, so I want that graphic to go through. So this is not necessarily the most desirable option. It's the easiest option. It reads the Revit properties and it automatically does what it's supposed to do, no extra work, but it doesn't necessarily create the best graphics. And if you are using a custom pattern, uh, like a a pattern that replicates sort of a dash dot or a dash dot dot type pattern. When you deal with angled walls and curved walls, sometimes that pattern looks really squirrely. And so again, we sometimes don't use it just because the graphics aren't what we want. Let's talk about the fire rating tool. In fact, I'm gonna undo all of this, there we go. I'm gonna undo that. And we're gonna talk about the fire rating tool and how it works. First off, where do you find it? Well, up here on the CTC software tab, on the BIM project suite, I'll pull it off the ribbon for a minute so you can see it out here. On the BIM project suite, there's a tool here called Fire Rating. This is the tool I'm gonna to focus on for the rest of the day. This tool here, Fire Rating, when I click on it, it's gonna open up the Fire Rating interface, 
right here. It has three primary tabs, fire ratings, mappings, and graphics. There's also options available to you to change kind of how the tool decides it wants to work, how it deletes and recreates graphics when you refresh stuff in the future. The first tab though, the fire ratings tab, lets me see a list of all of my walls in my project here, whether they're basic walls or whether they're uh, uh, curtain walls or compound walls or whatever. It lets me see all the stuff. It lets me see the names of the wall, the type name, how many instances of that wall exist, and if it has a fire rating and what that fire rating might be. The only thing that I can actually change from this environment is the actual fire rating. I seem to recall looking at this earlier today and as I scroll down, I noticed that somebody had taken the tile half inch wall. It's actually a finished wall in my project. They must have duplicated it from one of my one hour rated walls, but they never updated the actual rating. This should not be a rated wall. This should be a nothing. So I'm gonna actually edit this right from here. When I double click on that, it'll open up a dialog box. I can change the fire rating here either for that particular wall type or I could duplicate the wall type and append the new fire rating to the name. So if you wanted to create new wall types from different fire rating values, you could do that through here if you really cared to. In my case, I'm updating the original wall right here. So as I okay this, it's gonna change that fire rating for that wall. It updates it, we're good to go. By the way, I forgot to mention this earlier. I'm gonna mention it right now. As always with our webinars, with our presentations, if you wanna ask questions, please do hit up that questions window. I keep an eye on it and I answer questions in line. There was a question that just rolled through a moment ago, which is what made me think of this. Uh, the question was, can this be used from Revit MEP models or even Revit structure models? And the answer is, yeah, it can actually reach the link, it can find the information and it can generate those graphics. And in a minute here, I'll actually show you where that setting is. Uh, for now, I'm just taking a look at the actual configuration of the fire ratings themselves. And to that point, you won't be able to administer the ratings of a linked model. All you'll be able to do is create graphics on top of them. So this first tab, if you're dealing with a linked architectural project, would not be relevant. If you're live in the architectural project, then this is very relevant. The next tab, the mappings tab, is where you can actually create mappings based on fire ratings that exist. So in this case, I have two fire ratings that have been found either in this model or through the linked model. Uh, and, and I have two of them that are really relevant. There's a no rating, that's the third option, I suppose, no rating. But I do have a one hour and a two hour rated condition here. And you can, by the way, create saved mappings for these. So if one architecture partner you're working with has one value that they, typed, that they tend to type in and a different one has a different one, you can create those mappings and then save those, load them up later when you want to leverage it, okay? In this case, I have it already predefined in my file. I have a life safety one hour rated line style that I've made. It's blue, it's dash dot pattern, um, just a basic line style. It's got a fairly heavy line weight to kind of fill the, the gap in the wall. Um, and I'm using that for my one hour rated walls. And then similarly, I have a two hour rated wall that I believe is red. I've made the color red. It's a dash dot dot pattern, two dots. Uh, indicating two hour, and it's also a heavy line weight. And then for both of those walls, I've made myself a fire rating tag, a wall tag that just looks at the fire rating property. It's got an opaque background, I believe. It's got relatively small text. It, it sits inside the boundary of the line, which you know Revit natively cannot create text inside of a line style. It doesn't have that ability by default. So what I'm doing is I'm actually placing a wall tag on top of the wall, interrupting the line to make it look like the old AutoCAD graphics we used to use, the old traditional graphics where we've got a line with text embedded in it and then more line and then text embedded again. And so I can actually choose the rules about how this stuff spaces out in the project based on the walls I'm placing it on. So I'm just based, right here, I'm just on this mappings tab, I'm just creating some kind of mappings. For the one hour and two hour ratings, do these things. You do have the ability, should you choose, to also use a detail family. So you don't have to just use line styles and wall tags, you can actually use detail component families as well. I find these don't work quite as well on curved walls, but you know, it's up to you to decide exactly how it is you wanna leverage this and, and test it on your own projects to see how it works for you. Last tab here is the graphics tab. Now this is where you choose where you're generating, uh, in, in which floor plans you're generating your graphics. 
For today's example, I'm only gonna do it in the floor plan that I have visible, which is the code plan. But if I had other life safety plans or code plans, I could generate the graphics for all of them in one step. Click go, let it generate and be done. You can see over here to the right as well, walls in linked project models. So if you are a mechanical or structural engineer or electrical engineer, uh, you may want to you know, check the architectural model uh, over here and actually have it generate the graphics in the architectural model or for the architectural model live in your project. So you don't have to necessarily rely on their linked floor plans. You can generate your own graphics as you will. When you're generating the graphics themselves, you can choose what kind of spacing for those wall tags. If you are even generating graphics for wall tags, you may choose not to, but if you are generating the graphics, you can choose how to space it out. In my case, it's every 10 uh, using foot as my measurement. Uh, and it's, it's choosing an end spacing. The guarantee doesn't get too close to the ends of walls. It's gonna stop it within two feet of the end of a wall segment, two feet again here. And it's gonna try to use as best as possible the wall's orientation for the orientation of the tag. And again, sometimes curved and angled walls can you know, produce some screwy results with that. But you know, at least it tries to have the, the text align with the walls. Wall tags, unfortunately, can only be horizontal or vertical. So on an angled or rotated wall, you kind of, or a curved wall, you have to kind of choose what you want to do. There's another option here. I've had some clients come back to us recently and they said, hey, Sean, I want to be able to, uh, when I'm generating these fire ratings, not include walls from an existing phase, or I have a multi-phase view and I want to have this particular view show the ratings of walls of phase X, whatever that is. So we have a new feature here at the top of the fire rating tool that allows you to choose which phase specifically for which the fire ratings will be drawn. It will, if it sees the walls in this view of that phase, it will generate only for that phase. If you leave it blank, it will look for any fire rated walls across the entire, you know, whatever's visible in this view and it'll rate those and create the graphics for those. But if you choose a specific phase like existing or new construction, then that is the only phase uh, walls in that phase are the only ones where the graphics will be generated. Okay, let's actually create some graphics. I'm gonna click generate graphics here. It's gonna rip through this view and actually create some representation of fire rating. And if I close this tool down and zoom in, you'll start to see here that I've got one hour and two hour rated walls out there. This is one of those situations where I got sort of screwy graphics where it rotated in kind of a goofball way. I'm also noticing here that my my box for my text may not have been quite large enough. So I'm going to edit this. This is just a basic wall tag family. That's all it is. I'm just gonna make that a little wider and reload that back in my project so it does it on a single line. That's all I wanted right there. So you can see here now that it uses the actual property of the wall, the one space HR for the actual rating. It's placing it along the wall. It's placing it on top of the actual blue fire rating line in this case, that one hour rated line with the one dot in it. Up here, where I've got the two hour rated line, or two hour rated wall rather, same thing. It's in this case, because I'm using opaque text, it's blocking out whatever's behind it. You can make your tag however you want. You might not like the way that my graphics are. That's perfectly fine. It's just a wall tag. Also, another nice thing about the wall tags is if you don't like where the text is, you can remove it or move it wherever you feel is appropriate. So you have full correction control over where the exact graphics are. You can refine that per your model if you want to. These are basically what this tool is doing. Let me just be very clear about this. This is drawing detail lines on top of walls at the wall center line. Then it's placing wall tags on top of that at whatever spacing and interval we've asked it to do. That said, if somebody else in some other view decides, hey, I'm gonna redesign part of this floor plan, they grab a wall, they decide to move it, it's gonna go ahead and move that wall and do a thing, but back in your code plan, because those are just drafting lines, just detail lines, you're gonna get an issue where there's some disassociation. So let's go back into the fire rating tool because it understands that. It knows about those kinds of things. So when I go back here and generate my graphics or update my graphics, it will refresh that view and regenerate this. So just before print, I can go back out here and have that wall, that area regenerated to make it look the correct way to have that, the, that graphics re-coordinated. That's really all there is to the fire rating tool. 
you, you go in there, you create some mappings, and you tell it to generate graphics. And in the views where you've informed it about, it will draw fire rating lines and place fire rating wall tags on top of the walls in the model, either live in your active project or from a model that's linked in. OK. So how do you get your hands on this tool set? And by the way, if you have questions, this would be a perfect time to start typing them in, and I'll start answering those in the next little segment here. But how do you get your hands? on this suite? Well, if you go to our website here, ctcsoftware.com, up in the products portion on the BIM project suite 2020, you can get access to the BIM project suite. You can try it free for 14 days. You can also get some pricing from here. And just to be crystal clear, this already works on Revit 2017 through Revit 2020. Today's demonstration, I was actually doing this in Revit 2018 but this will work on all four latest versions of Revit. So you can download this for 14 days, try it out, see if you like it. And if you do, then talk to either ATG in the US for pricing and, and being able to purchase that, or talk to uh, uh, SolidCAD up in Canada if you wanna get your, your hands on this tool and purchase it up there. Or if you're international, you can certainly write us directly, uh, contact us and we'll be more than happy to talk with you internationally uh, not in the U.S. and not in Canada, about how to get your hands on the suite permanently. Thank you all for the time that you've given us. We always appreciate when you show up for our webinars, when you show up uh, live here and interact with us. It always makes it more fun for us. Uh, certainly, um, sign up for our newsletter so you can see when other webinars are coming. Uh, keep an eye on the events page on our website uh, so you can get signed up for other BIM project suite and other you know, Revit Express tool workflows that are coming in the near future.